Okay, so I, yes, I want to um, talk about some of the stuff that I want to be thinking uh, in the next uh, few months. And um, it's, it's going to be a, an application of some work that I did in my thesis. And, and it's based on, on the caustics that we, we know and love from seeing how light reflects. In this case, we're seeing how light is being uh, reflected on, on a glass so that the, the, the light bulb is not exactly in the center. That would be a little bit degenerate. But if you move it, you will see that this cusp kind of shape will form. And, and this is very simple object. It's a semi-cubical cusp. We understand it. But in higher dimensions or in parametric families, the singularities that one can get generically are, are very complicated. There's no hope of classifying them. And, and what I proved in my thesis is that if there is no homotopy theoretic obstruction to removing them, then, then you can remove these higher singularities by Hamiltonian isotopy. So it's some symplectic analog of this long line of work uh, of many people, of Hirsch and Smale and Phillips and, and Gromov and Igusa and, and so on and so forth, that, that uh, singularities of smooth maps can be removed if the homotopy theory allows. So I want to discuss uh, an application. Rather than, than, than give the precise formulation of the theorem, I, I would like to discuss an application that I'm interested in pursuing. So let me just make sure we're all on the same page. So um, a symplectic form, remember, is um, a non-degenerate closed two-form. call it omega. And uh, unlike in the case of, say, Romanian structures, there are no local invariants. There's the Darboux theorem. And all of the interesting topology comes from global invariants. And the existence of these global invariants is due to the relationship of symplectic geometry and, and complex geometry. So you can define counts of um, holomorphic curves, which that's one way, and but all of them are sort of related, give you global invariance. And um, I, I, so I, I'm going to say existence of global invariance from, from counts of pseudo holomorphic curves. And the natural boundary conditions for these, for these counts um, are, are Lagrangians. And so I just want to say what it means. So uh, Sorry. yes? Can you say variant of what? Of, of, so a symplectic form, let's say, on a, a manifold M, which will be two-dimensional. And then the, the invariance will be of the manifold. We, we will need compactness of some other form of, of condition. But I, I will get to that in a in a second. I, I just want to briefly yeah, outline what, what kind of what kind of objects we're we're thinking about. So I will say that as a manifold, uh, the condition of this form being uh, non-degenerate uh, implies that the dimension is even. And I will say that uh, that a half dimensional submanifold is Lagrangian if um, the form vanishes on it. In general, if I have a submanifold on which the form vanishes, I will just say it is isotropic. And in this maximal uh, dimensional case, um, I will say it is Lagrangian. So let me just say isotropic in parentheses. And, uh, and these, are, these are sort of the natural boundary conditions for these counts. Now, indeed, invariance of what? So, so if the manifold is compact, then, then we can talk about uh, the, there are compactness theorems that allow these counts to be meaningful. If the manifold is not compact, we need some kind of control at infinity. And, and uh, a, a powerful control is some kind of convexity. Um, and I want to talk about a particular class of convex at infinity symplectic manifolds, which are Weinstein manifolds. So a Weinstein manifold is going to be a symplectic manifold, which is a smooth manifold equipped with a symplectic form. And then there's two more pieces of structure. Okay. So the first piece of structure is called Liouville. And I want a vector field z. 
So um, symplectic manifold, let me just say with boundary for now, it's going to be a vector field Z, which is uh, conformally symplectically expanding. So the Lie derivative of omega with respect to Z is itself. I'll draw a picture in a second. And uh, such that Z is outwards pointing. Along the boundary, this the second condition is is uh, says that the boundary of W is convex, but but I want that convexity to to extend uh, to the interior, and this z vector field realizes that. And then uh, the Weinstein structure proper is uh, a Morse function, or generalized Morse. Let me just say Morse. Morse function for which z is gradient-like. OK, so. Picture might be something like this. We have some compact part, and then there's a boundary. I'm thinking of H as projecting down. And, and this boundary is convex, and moreover, this can be canonically completed if I want to by adding an infinite color in which uh, Z is just D of the direction of the color, and uh, the symplectic form is standard too. And examples that you should keep in mind are the cotangent bundle of any compact manifold, uh, uh, let's say closed, or um, any affine, any, any Stein manifold, any affine complex variety has an under, underlying Weinstein structure if I forget about the integrability of the complex structure. OK? So these are an important class of examples that symplectic topologists care about. And um, are there any sort of questions about the definition so before I proceed? I want what everywhere, sorry? Those, those yes. Ultra, yes. Everywhere, yes. Not yes. Yeah. OK. So consider the skeleton which is defined as the attractor of the negative flow of the vector field. Okay, so you take this flow that is pointing outwards here, and, and here it's more it's gradient-like for this Morse function. And, and you take uh, its backwards flow, so let's see, have, and, 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 and you get some kind of skeleton. And an observation that was already known to Milner is that um, the, these Z stable manifolds are isotropic, so Isotropic in the sense that um, each of these manifolds satisfies these conditions. And so um, these manifolds have dimension at most half. Okay. So the skeleton is a stratified subset, is a subset stratified by some manifolds of at most half the dimension. And under reasonable conditions, for instance, if H is more smale, and then Z is actually gradient with respect to some Euclidean structure near the critical points, th these are tech that, that definition can probably be weakened, but it's not written down. It doesn't matter. Under some, under some mild conditions, um, it's actually Whitney stratified. So let me just say that. It's a nice stratified set. Stratified under mild. 
And I think that a hope for a long time has been to try to understand Weinstein manifolds uh, via their skeletons. So an open neighborhood of the skeleton determines w, and, and I won't be precise about what determines means, but for, for the purposes of the invariance that we care about, it determines it. <laughs> However, skeleton of w does not. Would me stratified? Yeah. I mean, I, I <sighs> there's some nice cone structure near every stratum. Yeah. If, I, we can we can talk about it afterwards as well. Um, so 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 unfortunately that that makes it a uh, that makes it hard to just work with the stratified set. And what Nadler, uh, David Nadler, introduced is a class of a uh, Arboreal singularities. So that's that's uh, that's the name that he gave, and uh, the way that I think uh, one can think about them is sort of the the simplest singularities of a skeleton. In that sense, one could hope for. And this, and this can be made precise, because you see the skeleton is formed by a bunch of stable manifolds. And these stable manifolds are going to interact with each other. And, and so there's, there's a set of singularities that are just based on iterated cones that are going to be forced on you. And then, in general, there will be a lot more complicated stuff. But this is, this is the, the least that you could hope for. He actually guessed this definition coming from a very different point of view. But, uh, but the conjecture that he made um, was that up to Weinstein homotopy, so up to homotopy of Weinstein structures, every Weinstein manifold has an arboreal skeleton. So it has a skeleton whose singularities only live in this class. And there's, there's, there's other things that are nice about this class. For instance, the, the Invariance that, that we care about can be computed locally for these singularities. I mean, he gave these computations. Um, and if this is coupled with the appropriate one parametric version of the statement, then in some sense, Weinstein manifold topology could be reduced to the smooth topology of arboreal stratified spaces. So that's, that's kind of the dream. Um, and finally, I want to finish just by giving an idea of how those results of, of simplification of caustics could be used to prove this. And, and it is joint work uh, with, um, with Ellie Ashberg, Nadler, and Laura Starkston to, uh, to prove it. And I just want you to consider a simplest example in which I have the cotangent bundle of a sphere. And I'm going to add a handle to it. Let's say a top dimensional handle. Okay, so this is, a, this is a DN. And it's going to be attached along an attaching sphere, which will be n minus 1 dimensional and will live in the cosphere bundle of Sn. And the skeleton of, of this once I manifold, once I attach this handle, will consist of Sn union the dn, but the dn will land um, on the sphere by means of the front projection. So I'll, I'll draw the sphere like this. And this lands. And so this is a projection that actually is of that exact same type. So it will generally have some cusps and potentially in higher dimensions some other stuff. And now if the singularities of this projection are simple, then it is fairly easy to uh, find an arboreal skeleton. But if the singularities of this projection are very complicated, then it's not. And so what we're uh, trying to do is to use those results on the simplification of singularities to iteratively simplify the singularities of this projection and therefore arborealize the skeleton of Weinstein manifolds. OK, I'll, I'll finish there. Thank you very much.